Senator Brownback. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for uh, holding this hearing and moving this along. And thank you for the way you're uh, conducting the, the meeting and, uh, and conducting this in a difficult situation. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I voted for uh, Michael Mukasey. I've met with him. I've talked with him. I think it, it seems to me that we're, uh, we're missing the forest for a tree uh, on this, uh, this highly qualified nominee, highly qualified not only by uh, background and by education, but by experience. I think almost even uniquely qualified at this point in time. We're just looking this over again. He's ruled in national security cases involving at least 15 different defendants. That includes the Blind Shake trial. We ruled on a broad spectrum of national security related issues in that trial. We ruled on a number of cases um, in the uh, Jose Padilla uh, trial, including the need for an enemy combatant to have access to a lawyer, the power of the president to designate an individual an enemy combatant, the applicability of the federal habeas corpus uh, statutes, uh, the reach of material witness statutes, and more. The reason I point all that out is that you're at the, the tail end of this administration. We're at war, uh, war on terrorism, and you've got a, a uniquely qualified individual to look at a number of the legal implications uh, in a war the type of which we haven't been in before, uh, where your enemy combatants are not representatives of foreign governments, but they represent some sort of uh, linkage extraterritorial. And we are going through a whole series of legal questions. And here's a man who's dealt with these on a trial court basis, who is brilliant, I think, in dealing with it on a difficult set of, of um, issues. Uh, I really uh, want to express, and I'm sorry she's left, uh, appreciation to Senator Feinstein for uh, the letter that she got from Jed Mukasey recently for uh, standing up and for um, uh, even the personal attacks in here in the uh, room uh, against her. These are not easy decisions by anybody. They certainly weren't an easy decision by uh, Senator Feinstein, uh, and I think it, it hurts uh, the committee, I think it hurts the process when they're personally attacked in the committee room, and I appreciate, uh, Chairman, you clearing the room of individuals when they do something like that. These aren't easy decisions to make. I do appreciate Senator Feinstein's approach on this narrower issue uh, that she's put forward on waterboarding and in the letter that she's gotten back, and I think this is a sensible process for people to follow. Uh, on this particular technique, and I, uh, I, I think it's wise that we go uh, that route. Mr. Chairman, uh, one of the issues that came up during the presidential debates that I got to participate in, uh, not very well, but I got to participate in them uh, nonetheless. And, uh, but at, we're, uh, we're glad to have you back. Well, I'm delighted to be back. I didn't intend to be back, but uh, I'm, uh, I'm honored to be back. But at one, of the, at one of the debates, a question came up that I thought was just too, too real for the moment. Uh, and that was one of the, the, the moderators asked the question, oh, okay, uh, you know or there's significant uh, traffic going on that somebody has uh, a dirty bomb uh, or a nuclear weapon and is planning to bomb a uh, mall in the United States, a major shopping mall in the United States. What would you do as President of the United States in that particular scenario? And you have um, uh, people who uh, appear to know factually what the case is. It's really what Senator Specter uh, cited to earlier. And the, the problem with the scenario is, well, it's one that he put forward as a moderator. It is all too real of a possibility of where we are as a nation right now. Uh, that you could have that sort of scenario in this country today. And you're standing there as somebody that, that hopes to be uh, the leader of the country, and you're wrestling with the very core question that we're on right now. I want to save the lives. And the first role of the federal government is to provide for the common defense. And yet at the same time, you want to stand as the, uh, the standard bearer in the world uh, for what is right and what is appropriate. Uh, and that makes, I think, these questions very, very difficult to look at. I think that's why the scenario that Senator Feinstein's put forward is the way to go. Because if you're the president in a situation like that, and thousands of American lives are at stake, and you have somebody that you've caught that has material information on that, and you're looking at that situation, what would you do? 
You, and I think any one of us would say you push it as absolutely far as you can to get that information because this is critical to saving American lives. And this is your job as president to do that. I think it's an all too realistic scenario. I recognize as Senator Graham puts forward, uh, these have implications around the world, no question about it. And I want this country, and I've said it often, to stand for what's good and what's right. At the same time, you want to keep the people alive, and you want to go as far as you can to get that information if it's going to save American lives. I think we've got an outstanding nominee who has wrestled with these issues more than perhaps anybody else in America today. I'm glad he's cleared through committee. I hope he can clear on through the floor, and then I hope we can come back and clear through this issue of waterboarding along the lines of what Senator Feinstein has recommended. For that reason, he has my support, uh, and he has my gratitude for coming forward as a, what I believe is an outstanding nominee for as far as experience in a time of extraordinary need in this job. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.